Hi friends, welcome back to our channel Community Medicine Made Easy. Today we are going to see quick revision of epidemiology. Community medicine stands on two pillars we say that is epidemiology and statistics. But I would say the whole allopathic system of medicine actually stands on the firm foundation laid by the principles of epidemiology. But today's video is not about that. I have I have put a separate video regarding the importance of epidemiology in uh, in this same channel. Uh, you can watch that video if you want to know the importance of epidemiology. But today's video is about quick revision in exam point of view. Epidemiology is a vast chapter given in community medicine book and I have put it in a nutshell again as before I have used the innovative method of mind mapping for epidemiology. It is going to be extremely useful for your exams if you revise it because I have put in a lot of effort in making this mind map and ultimately I think it has come out very well. So please uh, listen to this video so that you will have a very quick revision about the all the key points in epidemiology in exam point of view so all the very best let's so let's proceed with the quick revision of epidemiology and definitely there will be a five mark question and uh, remaining short questions epidemiology will be asked there are about 80 pages in epidemiology in part which I have covered in few minutes in this video so we will discuss one by one in exam point of view so, the, what are the aims of epidemiology? The definition, it is a study of occurrence and distribution of health related events, states and processes in specific population including the study of determinants, influencing such process and the application of this knowledge to control relevant health problems. So, the key words are occurrence, distribution and determinants. So, what is the aim of epidemiology? To describe the magnitude and distribution of the problem, to identify the etiological factors in the pathogenesis of disease, to provide the data essential for planning, implementation and evaluation of services for control of health problems. What, are, what is the difference between clinical and community medicine? The basic difference is this, the unit of study is the disease of individual patients, whereas in community medicine, the unit of study is disease pattern in the entire population, we study the community as a whole. What is the pattern of disease and what is the basic approach in epidemiology? It is two things asking questions, making comparisons. Ask uh, like uh, why, what, when, where, how, these are the questions we have to ask and we have to compare with the normal population. What are the tools of measurement in epidemiology? The rate, ratio, and proportion are the three tools. The rate is in turn divided into crude rate, specific rates, and adjusted rates. Crude rate is actual observed rates which are usually unstandardized because of lack of comparability. Specific rate is actual observed uh, rates due to a specific cause like tuberculosis, leprosy. And what is adjusted rate? Here there is chances for comparison is possible. That's why standardization is done. There are two types of standardization, direct and indirect, which we will see later. Ratio, it is the relation between two quantities and there is no relation actually between the numerator and the denominator so the numerator is usually is not a part of denominator in ratio that is the difference between the ratio and proportion whereas in proportion numerator is always a component of denominator and what are the examples for rates ratios sex ratio doctor population ratio doctor nurse ratio these are all ratios so the denominator is usually related to the total population or related to the total events what is proportion? It is a relation in magnitude of part of the whole. The numerator is always a component of denominator. It is usually expressed in percentage. Ratio has no unit of expression. Next coming to the mind map of measurement of mortality. Uh, here we have basically death certificate. Death certificates used in India, clinical and community medicine and uses of mortality. The death certificate, we can see the yes, following three columns. The direct cause, the disease or conditions directly related to the death is first A. What is the antecedent causes which are leading to death? It could be 1, 2 or 3. So, it could be written here B, C and uh, etc. Other significant conditions but not directly related to death can be written in the column D. This is the general format for death certificate. Where, but the death certificate used in India have some extra questions added to international version because of the pregnancy and infancy related conditions which can lead to death. Coming to limitations of mortality data, the incomplete reporting of uh, deaths in India is a common problem. There is lack of accuracy in reporting to find out the exact cause of death. 
there is lack of uniformity in egg reporting that is many practitioners tend to mix up the columns here in a b c they tend to mix up resulting in inaccurate reporting choosing a single cause of death again is a problem and the changing coding systems for causes of death is also a reason for trouble so these are the limitations of mortality data what are the uses of mortality data it is a useful data for studying the trend of any disease problem in the community and based on the mortality statistics we can plan and allocate alloc allocate priority for certain priority problems and less priority problems we can allocate less resources coming to mortality rates and ratios the crude death rate it is the death rate in a particular population and usually because why it is crude because there is lack of comparability suppose the death rate for a some disease in young population is given the death rate for the same disease in old population is given we cannot compare both so that is a problem with crude death rate specific death rate it is cause or disease specific related to specific groups like tuberculosis mortality among tuberculosis patients is a specific death rate um, case fatality rate which is a ratio ratio of death to cases like infection it is useful very useful in acute infectious diseases like cholera and the case fatality rate is actually a measure of virulence of a particular disease proportional mortality rate is also a ratio it is what proportion of deaths are due to a particular cause and usually it is a broad disease groups like uh, uh, the common communicable disease problems how much is the proportion of uh, problem um, of communicable diseases compared to all other problems like this it's, it always measures broad groups uh, like uh, not only communicable disease coronary heart disease cancer like this uh, it is usually expressed in broad terms and survival rate it is what proportion of people survived after follow up it is actually a measure of prognosis like uh, if they are alive that means the uh, prognosis is good and adjusted or standardized rate it is to compare the death rate of two population with a different age composition it could be sex adjustments race adjustments that is because the male and female if you are going to compare then it should be standardized the race again if it's indian race and western population or chinese race then it should be standardized with a standard population generally we can actually compare the rates so there is two methods of standardization direct standardization and indirect standardization in direct standardization it is a standard population with a known age sex composition is first taken and from that the expected deaths are calculated and then the death rate what we got should be compared in indirect standardization it is a standardized mortality ratio this is a formula is observed death by expected death into 100 this is a indirect method of standardization and other methods of standardization or use of life tables regression techniques and multivariate analysis techniques in statistics which should be used for standardization coming to the incidence and prevalence the incidence is the definition is the number of new cases in defined population in defined time period this is more important people tend to write only new cases they forget to write about defined population and defined time period that is very important where it is used it is usually used for acute conditions and it is usually used to form the etiology the causal factor of a particular problem what are the types attack rate and secondary attack rate these are the methods by which incidence is expressed uh, what are the uses it is very useful for the control of a disease problem it is useful for research into the etiology and pathogenesis of your disease and third is it is a very useful for ass assessing the efficacy of a preventive measure whether the disease has been controlled that we can find out by reduction in incidence uh, if you come to prevalence it is the old and new cases existing at a, existing at a given point of time this is the difference here it is at a point of time whereas it is time period so where it is used it is a good prognostic factor uh, to assess the prognosis of the disease it is a very useful factor than incidence prevalence is a very good prognostic factor then types there are two types point prevalence and period prevalence um, what are the uses to estimate the magnitude of the problem and for administrative and planning purposes how much is the size of your problem based on that resources could be alloc allocated so this is incidence and prevalence what is the formula connecting these two prevalence is equal to incidence into duration then next coming to the epidemiological methods there are two types of studies we all know this 
graph in table in park observational studies and experimental studies in observational studies we have descriptive studies and analytical studies the ecological or correlational studies here the unit of study is the population study population group whereas in all other analytical study designs like cross sectional uh, case control or cohort it is the individual who is a unit of the study cross sectional is always called prevalence case control is always called case reference cohort is always called cohort or follow up studies and third type that is experimental studies here we have three things randomized control trials or clinical trials field trials and community trials here in randomized control trial it is the patient as a unit of study in field trial healthy people is a unit of study in community trial the community is a unit of the study coming to the mind map of descriptive epidemiology the entire descriptive epidemiology i have put up in a single slide so that these are the few things six things which we are going to cover here in this slide defining the population defining the disease under the study very good uh, definition is needed especially in epidemiology it may not be so important in clinical medicine but in community medicine epidemiology it is very important to have a proper definition for your disease and usually for descriptive epidemiology studies the population needs to be large enough and then only it will provide the proper denominator and we already told this the operational definition of your disease is very important here then next is three things here in descriptive epidemiology we usually describe the disease by time describing the disease by place and describing the disease by person coming to the describing the disease by time if you see there are three types in turn short term fluctuation periodic fluctuation and long term or secular turn Uh, what are the diseases which come under the uh, short term fluctuation again is in turn divided into common source and propagated epidemic in common source epidemic if you see it is in turn divided into single and repeated exposure single exposure uh, it could be like a food poisoning which can occur in a festival and repeated exp exposure like the prostitute who has a sexually transmitted disease can repeatedly transmit uh, the infection to the customers and we have the next one is propagated epidemic where usually the disease is transmitted from person to person and uh, examples like a hepatitis a cholera and all it will it will be transmitted easily because of uh, fecal oral route person to person and uh, uh, coming to the uh, periodic fluctuation here again we have two types seasonal trend and cyclic trend some diseases follow a seasonal trend especially like dengue which occurs during the monsoon rainy season because of the outbreak of the mosquito population so certain diseases follow the seasonal trend that is gastrointestinal infections sunburns these are all occur during the summer season more commonly whereas viral fevers occur during the winter season similarly there could be a cyclical trend of diseases like over a period of time classic example is measles which occurs over a period of 2 to 3 years rubella infection which can occur uh, every 6 to 9 years coming to the long term or secular trend which can occur over a long period of time the classical examples are in developed countries we see the trend of coronary heart disease lung cancer and diabetes which was more higher during the uh, 60s 70s now it is slowly coming down because of the various reasons so that is a long term variation in the incidence of the disease where we see the fluctuation whereas in developing countries like india there is another form of secular trend we can see in tuberculosis typhoid and diphtheria because of the effective national health programs and uh, effective vaccinations we are seeing a slow decline in the incidence of these problems so these are the examples of long term or secular trend that is that's all about the time distribution coming to the place distribution of diseases we can see international variation in the occurrence of disease like a carcinoma stomach is more common in the japanese group carcinoma oral cavity and cervix is very common in the indian population similarly we can see national variation like goiter is more common in the himalayan belt and in places where the soil content of iodine is less lethargism is more commonly found in states which consume lethargic sativus pulses in their diet fluorosis is more common in places where the fluoride content of water is less or more malaria is more common in the hilly regions mainly the falciparum malaria whereas in urban area the, and the rural area vivax is more common similarly there could be rural urban variation like chronic bronchitis and accidents are more common in urban areas helminthiasis and soil transmitted infections are more common in rural areas 
that could be even local distribution variation so that could be uh, we can put a spot map and then we can see if there is any clustering of cases in a particular locality if there is clustering of cases what it means is there is a infection or etiology is in that particular area in that particular point so the intervention measures can start at that point so that is that's all about place distribution coming to the person distribution age that could be variation in the occurrence of disease in age like there are some diseases which follow a bimodal distribution example is hodgkin's lymphoma which occurs early young age and as well as in old age similarly leukemia all these diseases have a age variation sex some diseases are common in females some are common in males ethnicity some indian population are prone to different types of diseases western population chinese population depending on the ethnicity the disease pr probability may vary marital status the single unmarried are more prone to health and disease than married people occupation we all know depending upon the occupation the problems can arise social class it is the lowest social economic strata which can uh, have more health and disease problems behavior like smoking alcoholism and all other personal behavior can have a direct influence on health migration of the people from different areas it, it could also lead to uh, disease occurrence so what is the purpose of collecting this data in the descriptive study time place and person distribution it is mainly to find out the etiology to get a clue so how to get a clue using a statistical methods that is measurement of the data comparison of the data with this we can get a hypothesis an approximate etiology and uh, with the, so what is the uses of a descriptive epidemiology it provides data regarding the disease load it gives the mortality and morbidity data based on this data we can have a idea about the clue regarding the etiology of a disease condition and it so i am telling only hypothesis so if you want to prove exactly this is the reason this is the risk associated then we cannot prove that with descriptive epidemiology then we have to go to the next level of study design that is analytical epidemiology design here we have in park an excellent diagram is given if you see the design of a case control and design of cohort study the direction of the study in case control study is it from effect to cause it proceeds from here like population and who had the disease who didn't have the disease we take the uh, data regarding these two people and then we go back again and see whether these cases were exposed to a particular risk factor or not exposed controls whether they are exposed or not exposed whereas in a cohort study the direction of inquiry starts from cause to effect we start from here we start from people without the disease and then we classify them into exposed and non exposed group and then we follow them up over a period of time and see whether the disease occurs or not where in non exposed group disease occurs or not that is the two basic things in analytical study design so this is the mind map of uh, analytical epidemiology if you see the case control study the fe main feature is the both the exposure and outcome have already occurred it proceeds from effect to cause whereas in cohort the cause are identified prior and it proceeds from cause to effect cohorts are the group of people who share similar characteristics and uh, coming to the steps in case control study it is the selection of appropriate cases and appropriate controls it could be the ratio of one case to up to four controls and we have to do a matching for cases and controls so that they are we ensure that the both cases and controls are similar in all respects with except for the disease and except for the factor and investigation third thing is measurement of exposure in both cases and controls and then fourth is analysis and interpretation what we are going to get the finding from this uh, matching and exposure so what we can measure in a case control study is we can only measure the exposure rate among the cases and control how much they were exposed to the uh, suspected factor uh, so the exposure rate can be calculated and odds ratio can be calculated because it's a case control study we cannot actually calculate the incidence because we are proceeding from effect to cause whereas in a cohort study this is the main thing we can in fact calculate directly the incidence rate which is not possible so we calculate indirectly using odds ratio and then the bias which can occur in case control study is because say, we are conducting a study after the event has occurred there could be memory problem like the patient may not exactly remember what really happened during the disease time 
and uh, selection bias that could be uh, the selection of cases and controls that could be selection bias there are many different types of bias with respect to household neighborhood family different types of bias can occur berkisonian bias is a special bias which can occur in a case control study because of different rates of admission uh, in different hospitals a cancer specialty hospital will not admit uh, pregnancy cases a multi specialty hospital will see more of cardiac cases and uh, uh, emergency problems than a uh, um, again mch problem so there could be different rates of admission because of this the berkisonian bias can happen what are the advantages and disadvantages the main advantage of why we do this is because it is inexpensive this is suitable for rare diseases the risk factor and etiology can be identified and the ethical problems are really very less here because we need not take a real consent unless uh, only thing is we have to get a permission for usage of the records from the patient and uh, without forgetting any time you have to write always write about case control study examples the classical studies the adeno parsim of vagina association with the dietal silvestrol it's a classical study oral contraceptive pill and thromboembolic disease association again was found out by case control study thalidomide strategy is another classical example of how the thalidomide given during pregnancy led on to congenital anomalies in the babies coming to the cohort study the steps are selection of study subjects obtaining the data and exposure selection of the comparison group follow up and analysis here we are uh, separating them into two group exposed and non exposed and then we are going to follow them up over a period of time and what we can calculate here is incident rate of outcome among the exposed and non exposed and we can also calculate relative risk attributable risk a population attributable risk relative risk incidence among exposed by incidence among non exposed into 100 attributable risk incidence rate among exposed by incidence rate among non exposed divided by incidence among exposed into 100 population attributable risk incidence among the general population minus incidence among non exposed by incidence among the general population into 100 so relative risk gives us the strength of association between the risk factor and the disease attributable gives risk gives us the uh, how much the Uh, disease and the study is attributable to the particular risk factor and population attributable risk is a very good measure like uh, suppose if we eliminate that risk in the uh, population how much that uh, that particular disease could be reduced in the population that is what we measure by population attributable risk what are the advantages and disadvantages several possible outcomes can be studied at a time it's a direct estimate of relative risk and bias can be minimized because before the start of the study itself we decide who are the cases who are the controls but the problems are many cohort study there could be a problem main problem ethical problem suppose we are going to study the effect of smoking and uh, so we take two groups smokers and non smokers and then we follow them up over a period of time the ethical problem here is we cannot unknowingly allow a smoking person to continue to do that bad habit because just because we are doing a research so in these situations we have to get a informed consent from the patient and uh, second thing is attrition because we are following the patients over a period of time the patient may lose interest patient may migrate because of transfer job transfer so in these conditions the people that could be lost to follow up this is called as attrition and third thing is costly we cannot follow up everyone uh, over a period of time it we have to go by person sometimes or by telephonic interview or by internet whatever measure we follow is going to be costlier than a case control study um, what are the classical examples of uh, cohort study the doll and hills study of smoking and lung cancer is a very classical example which was conducted among the doctors to find out the association and the framingham heart study is a very long term study even today it is being conducted and uh, the patients are being followed up uh, to find out the cardiovascular problems and the third thing is the association between oral contraceptives and health this is another classical study example of a cohort study the uh, then coming to the experimental epidemiology so what we can uh, measure in analytical epidemiology finally is only the strength of association like whether the odds ratio or it could be a relative risk but we know this is associated with that but to prove that really there is a association we go for the next level of study design and that is experimental study design and this again is given nicely in park uh, this is these are the steps first we have to select a suitable st study population could be a reference or target population then select the suitable sample from that population those are the experimental or study population make necessary exclusion 
those who are not eligible those who do not wish to give consent so please remove those people and then you go into the randomization randomization is called as the heart of their uh, experimental study design why it is called as the heart of the study design is because